Every time I see him running around, the defender is so far away from him. Like he's an illusion. Really well. Mm. And JJ was dynamite. Mm. One of the best top five. Now that's what your number one's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. When you targeting. <laughs> <laughs> Year, Kirk Cousins going to make him because of Justin Jefferson. That's the difference. Those that you would not order. After releasing my most recent video, I knew I was due for my first NFL project. I thought for a while, and as a Packers fan, I had a good idea what it would be. Until a couple Sundays ago, when none other than Justin Jefferson along with, as Shannon Sharp would say, Ocampo Kirk, scorched my Packers en route to a 23-7 victory. So instead, we're gonna dive into Justin Jefferson's meteoric rise and why, in my opinion, he could be on the Mount Rushmore of receivers one day. Before we get into things, don't forget to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel. And without further ado, my name's Justin and let's dive into some underdog culture. Born June 16th, 1999, Justin Joshua Jefferson is a 23 year old professional wide receiver out of St. Rose, Louisiana for the NFL's Minnesota Vikings. You may know him from the historic run of the 2019 LSU team, being the receiver with the most yards through his first two years of their career, or maybe by his gritty dance he helped popularize, and oftentimes in the end zone. If you're still lost, no worries because I'm gonna go ahead and take you through the basics. Through Jefferson's two seasons, he put up 88 receptions with 1,400 yards in 2020 and 1,616 yards on 108 catches the following year. Even though Jefferson's stint in the league has barely scratched the surface, you'd be surprised on how much he's already accomplished. Specifically, Jefferson set the NFL record for most receiving yards by a rookie, surpassing Anquan Bolden, although his former teammate Jamar Chase would go on to break that record in one year's time. Additionally, he was named to the Pro Bowl each of his two years while also surpassing Randy Moss's rookie receiving record with his 74th catch. Which brings us to the heart of this video, my claim that Justin Jefferson is and will be the next Randy Moss. Without all that extra stuff, I'm essentially saying when it's all said and done, I believe Jettas will be a top 4 receiver of all time. Being the youngest of three, Justin was raised at an early age that you gotta earn nearly every single thing you want in this world. Whether it be a PlayStation controller, a win and knockout, or some other non-traditionally competitive activity. And sure enough, Jettas was fighting tooth and nail to win every exchange. And like many things, college football was another thing Jefferson would have to make his own name for, considering his brother Jordan's reign as LSU's quarterback from 2008 to 2011. The love for football is synonymous with the Jefferson name, and given so, it's no surprise Jettas recounted caring for a football everywhere he went, whether it be to school, errands, or just a throw to himself in some empty lot next door. Eventually, Justin's love for football grew into something more serious, and sure, you could call it a strong desire to win, although his family would favor a refusal to experience the pain of defeat. Don't believe me? Ask the Jeffersons about his third place finish in the punt, pass, and kick championship when he was nine. By the time Jefferson entered high school, at a whopping 5'7", 125 pounds no less, his brother Ricky was just beginning his freshman year as a safety at LSU. As if he wasn't discouraged enough, Jefferson also was selected to play freshman ball instead of the previous standards set by his brothers as varsity starters during their freshman debuts. Thankfully, Jefferson sprouted up by his junior season with a 6'2 stature on a 155 pound frame. There were preliminary concerns about his strength, but obviously it wasn't too big of an issue. As Justin's senior season came to an end, nearly every concern surrounding his game had subsided, much to do with his 44 catches on 956 yards. Unfortunately, Justin's academics began to work against him in terms of recruiting, leaving his future up in the air for the time being. After a summer of crunch, Jefferson may have been eligible to join a D1 program, but they had stopped calling at this point, except for one. LSU's staff told Jettas a while ago that he would have a scholarship waiting on him whenever he was ready, and thankfully for both of them, that time had come. 
And just when Jefferson thought he had entered the cruise control phase of his young football career, he would face challenges at LSU he would have never imagined. Coming out of high school, many thought Jefferson was destined for greatness. Although, stepping onto one of the most talented rosters in college football as a two-star, four-offer recruit would be a tough feat for anybody. If he wanted to survive in that dog-eat-dog -dog climate in Baton Rouge, he would have to adapt and take that next step. New head coach Ed Ogeron wasn't as familiar with Justin and the rest of the Jefferson family as former head coach Les Miles was. Thus, he had to earn his spot from the very first day he stepped on campus. It wouldn't even be until LSU staff got to their very last scholarship available that Jefferson would secure his spot on the program. His first year on the squad yielded much of the same as he only got in a couple of games during garbage time. Things would change progressively as Jefferson continued to put his head down and grind and thanks to that, he caught the eye of former NFL and college coach slash part-time wide receiver guru, Jerry Sullivan. The man who's had a hand in the development in greats like Larry Fitzgerald, Isaac Bruce, Anquan Bolden, Herman Moore, and many others. In Baton Rouge, this man's word on wide receivers is taken as gospel. Specifically, Sullivan pointed out Jefferson's innate route running skills with the ability to nod, which, if you didn't know, like me, means a slight change in direction without losing speed. Thanks to this, LSU staff began to give Jefferson more and more chances to prove himself, culminating in 54 catches for 875 yards as a sophomore, and then, as we all know, the record-breaking year as the number one target for Joe Burrow en route to an NCAA championship while leading the country in reception receptions with 111, second in receiving touchdowns with 18, and third in receiving yards with 1,540. Even then, quite literally at the top of the sports world, Jefferson may have thought his obstacles were behind him, but yet again, he would be wrong. As the high from the championship season began to subside, more important matters were on Jefferson's plate, declaring for the NFL draft. Seems easy enough, right? The best receiver on the best team? Nah, can't be too bad. There wouldn't happen to be people that still thought he was a fluke, right? Well, okay, but surely it wasn't size concerns, right? I think by now he's put those conversations to bed about his drawbacks physically. Oh, they are? When the 2020 draft rolled around, it'd be 12 picks until he who shall not be named went 12 to the Raiders, Jerry Judy was snagged by the Broncos at 15, Dallas got CD at 17, Eagles took Regor at 21, and finally Jefferson was picked up by the Minnesota Vikings. I'm sure there was a lot of confusion about Jefferson's fit with the squad, and with the Vikings' recent blunders, it wasn't exactly a match made in heaven. Or so he thought. The Vikings faithful and the team would welcome Justin in with open arms, as they ambitiously hoped he could fill the void left by wide receiver Stephon Diggs' departure to the Bills during the previous offseason. Thankfully for both, the relationship and draft decision would prove to be mutually beneficial. To start though, it wasn't pretty, as Minnesota fell to 0-2 as they hosted Titans in a Sunday matchup. But as the season unfolded, Jefferson would show not only is he the best wide receiver in his class, but also one of the best in the league. As I mentioned, he went on to rack up 1,400 receiving yards, an NFL and franchise record for a rookie, breaking Randy Moss's record of 1,313 in 1998. Take note of that. On top of that, his 88 catches set another franchise record, and the seven touchdowns he recorded was fairly impressive as well. His seven games of 100 plus yards receiving as a rookie matched only Odell in 2014, shattering the Vikings' previous record of four. His big play ability was on showcase throughout his rookie campaign as well, tying the league high of 23 receptions of 20 plus yards. Thanks to this, Jefferson was the third Vikings receiver in the modern era to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, joining Percy Harvin and Randy Moss. Huh, that dude's name keeps popping up. With talks of a possible sophomore slump for Jefferson in year two, it seems he made a point to yet again prove his naysayers wrong and take the even further next step in the evolution of his game. Jefferson went on to surpass his excellent rookie showcase with 108 catches for 1,616 yards, thrusting him into stardom. Well that, and a little help from his gritty celebration. There's more to say about his game here, but much of that one to save for what's at the real heart of this video and something Justin has personally said he doesn't really care for. And that would be his comparison to Randy Moss and why I think he's the second coming of the all time great. While Moss was certainly a more gifted athlete than Jefferson, I think their production and potentially their impact on the game could be eerily similar. Before you claim blasphemy, just hear me out for a second. 
Let's start with Moss's rookie year and compare that to Jefferson's. Moss racked up 69 receptions to Jefferson's 88, 1,313 yards compared to 1,400, 82.1 yards per game compared to 87.5, 19 yards per reception to 15.9, and probably their biggest difference, Moss racked up 17 TDs to Jetta's 7. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Just by the eye test, the comparison can sound a little off kilter, but comparing by production and again, they're eerily similar aside from the touchdowns. Now, you may be saying the passing game was way less prolific back in the day, so Moss being able to put up those numbers about two decades ago is much more impressive. However, Moss was actually a part of an offense that put up 556 TDs to Jefferson's Viking squad's 430. Additionally, Moss's offense put up 4,328 yards compared to the 2020 Vikings' 4,009 yards. By the time Jefferson's second season wrapped up, he put up 2,735 yards through his first two years, which slightly edged out Moss's numbers of 2,726. Jefferson fell short of Moss's single season receiving record by a measly 16 yards, but assured fans that he wasn't bothered about the lack of opportunity he was granted in the playbook during the week 18 matchup versus the Bears. I could go on, but the big takeaway from this is yes, we know that Justin Jefferson's numbers have been great and have been setting records left and right. Those records just so happen to be held by a top three receiver of all time in Randy Moss. But what this also means is when Jefferson slightly edges out or falls short on one of those records, it is likely one of Moss's, and it makes their numbers shockingly similar. That's why this comparison might not be so likely at first glance, but upon examination, I think we're witnessing the second coming of Randy Moss. The only question to me is, will you slightly edge him out or fall short? Well, that pretty much sums up my take for this video. I find myself comparing two great players in their respective sports way too much. Regardless, this is the part of the video where I turn it back to you, but before I give y'all some question prompts for the comments, I just wanted to say thank y'all and hello to all my new subscribers and viewers. I could have never imagined the amount of exposure my last video got and just wanted to express my gratitude. Not that the job is done by any means, we got a lot of grinding ahead of us, but I just wanted to say my piece. Now, how do you feel about the Randy Moss and Justin Jefferson comparison? Do you think Jefferson has that ability to maintain greatness over an extended period and contribute to winning in a major way, possibly leading to a Super Bowl? Or do you think the hype on Jefferson is overblown? Let me know what you think down below and as always, this video was made by Underdog. Peace.